Welcome to Podnuts Daily for December 5th, 2008, episode number 117. Okay. Customer came in with a Dell laptop, uh, Inspiron 1525, on boot up before Windows even loads. She gets the error, um, boot device not found. Bo- no bootable device is found. I've had a similar problem with a Inspiron 1725. The customer had actually dropped the computer. And the SATA connection was not, the SATA controller was not working anymore, so she couldn't boot from an internal hard drive. She could boot from a CD. She could boot from an external hard drive if you're not running Windows, or even a flash drive if you're running like Pen Linux or something like that, but no internal drive. So a, a customer brought me a 1525, which is today, which is a 15 inch version of that. I saw that error and I go immediately, oh, it's probably your motherboard, because that's what happened on a 1725. Now, upon further checking, the um, I pulled the hard drive out and tested it externally with a USB to SATA cable on another computer, powered it up, and it was fried. So it's probably just the hard drive that's bad, and I scared her, and I shouldn't have done that. And I shouldn't have jumped to a conclusion. So because um, a hard drive replacement is a lot cheaper than a motherboard replacement. But anyway, that's what the problem was on no bootable devices found. Um, hard drive problem. That was that. Um, a nifty program that I use today was ISO Recorder. I know um, Mike from Mike Tech Show has talked about using, um, what is it, Win XP Burner or something like that. Win Burner XP. CD Burner XP, I think it's called. And that's cool. But for ISOs, I use a program, free program called ISO Recorder in Vista. And I haven't used it in XP. But it's great because you just right-click on an ISO and then you can just... Um, burn it to a disk or when you put a new disk in you could burn it as an ISO anywhere on your hard drive so you, I always keep a folder called boot or uh, disk images on my hard drive where I have disks that if I ever lose I could just burn another one and I keep ISOs in a folder called disk images on my hard drive and that's a good idea to do in case you have like um, a disk that you always use like your ultimate boot CD disk or um, in this case I made a BART PE disk and um uh, a bar, I actually made a BART PE disk. I know I'm jumping all around, but I made a BART PE disk today because I had a system, and every time we tried to run Ultimate Boot CD on this system, it blue screened. So I wanted, and plus Ultimate Boot CD takes a long time to load. So I wanted to open up a program or run a run a program, not Nopix, Windows, like something Windows based, because I had to do some registry edits. Um, but I didn't want all. I don't need all the bells and whistles of the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows. Uh, BART, Ultimate Boot CD from Windows is built on BART PE, and for those of you who don't know what BART PE is, it's, it stands for BART's um, pre-environment. Is that what it is? Is that what PE stands for, pre-environment? It's basically allowing you to run Windows from a CD, and you don't need to have a working hard drive. You could do diagnostics and whatnot. Okay, Tommy says yes, it is. Um, yeah, it's pre-environment. It's Windows pre-environment. So it basically puts Windows onto a CD, so you can boot from that CD and do work on a computer from that CD and not have to actually boot from the hard drive. And it, I, I actually didn't use it. My dad used it. I just handed it over to him. So I don't know how fast it loaded, but I assumed it's going to load faster than the Ultimate Boot CD. So that's what I like about Nopix too. It loads pretty fast. If BART PE loads fast, then I'll be able to do it, use that more. Um, and then if I need a lot of extra tools, I use the Ultimate Boot CD. But it just takes so long to load for me for sometimes. Pre-install, pre-installation environment. That's what PE stands for. Um, thank you guys in the chat room. Hey, Fishy's here. Long time no see. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so let me get to the computer why for why I needed to install BartP in the first place. It is a Win a Windows desktop computer running Windows XP Professional. The problem with this computer is when you boot it and you go to log on. It logs on for a split second and immediately logs you off, and then you're back at the log on screen again. And we had this problem before. There is was a registry fix we found in some forums that we tried and didn't work. Um, again, I'm, I'm not the person who worked on this computer, so I don't know exact registry fix. But what I decided to do was do a system restore. Now, because we couldn't log into the system using safe mode or normal mode, we couldn't go into, you know, do a normal system restore. You just go into programs, applications, system tools, system restore. So we did a manual system restore, which basically takes a copy of the of a 
a backup copy of the registry Windows has made and you replace the current corrupted registry with that backup copy using using a different tool. Like you could either use command line prompts, like the you could use recovery console to do it. Um, but in this case, I, I don't like doing it because there's a lot of typing when you use a recovery console. So if you use BART PE disk or the ultimate boot CD for Windows, you can just use the Windows Explorer and do it. So what you do is you just you t- you go into um, open up Windows Explorer from either BART PE or or Nopic. You can even do this from Nopix or Ultimate Boot CD for Windows, and you go to System Volume Information, it, which is in your C fol- your root folder. And in System Volume Information, there's a folder called Restore with a bunch of long characters after it. You go into that folder. And then there's a bunch of restore points. If your computer is set to make restore points, there's a bunch of restore points in there, all numbered. You pick one, which is basically based on the date that you want to go back to. And in that folder is a folder called Snapshot. You go into the folder called Snapshot. And then you got to pull the five files out of there, which are default, SAM, system, software, and security. And you take those five files and you move them into... Your Windows System 32 config folder, which holds the Windows registry files. And you, well, first you go into Windows System 32 config folder and you back up the existing default SAM software security system files. Put them in a backup folder because that's your existing registry and you just want to have a backup of it. And you take the files from that folder I mentioned before, the snapshot folder, you pull them into the new folder, you rename them to default system SAM security software. And you reboot the system, and then it's going to boot from those regi- that registry file. Um, that's what I'm going to try to do. We didn't get to finish it because Bart PE was choking on us. We didn't get to finish it. I'm going to know what happens either tomorrow or Monday for that. So I'll get you guys know I'm back on that. But that's how you do a manual system restore. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it causes a little mess up in the system. Uh, Timster says it's a great tip. Thanks, Timster. <laughs> Um, if I, if I, anybody, I lost anybody there cause that was a lot of significance there. Just, uh, that's why it's a recording. You can go back, hit rewind. <laughs> well, not live, but when you go back and listen to the podcast, you can hit rewind. Um, that's why a lot of times I don't repeat things because you guys have a rewind button. You don't need me to repeat things. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? A Toshiba laptop reinstalled device drivers. Okay. Yesterday, the day, day before I mentioned a computer where it was a Toshiba laptop, not a real high end gaming machine, but the, the kid who used it likes to play a lot of games on it, 3D rendered games. And he had went ahead and overclocked the processor and try, I think he over, tried to overclock the graphics chip as well and uh, update the drivers and get like advanced drivers for it. And it kind of got a little goofed up on the system and he brought it into us. First thing we did was cleaned all the dust out of it, which if you're run, playing a lot of games, 